coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry is when you define a point according to its position with respect to the coordinate axis. Sounds like a string of complicated words, doesn't it? Well, well, don't worry. In this chapter, you will get a good idea of what coordinate geometry is all about. Now, suppose I walk inside a class and say, boy, come here. What do you think will happen? I'm sure all the boys in the class will get up from their seats and walk up to me, right? That's because I didn't specify which boy I was calling out to. At the same time, if I say, the boy who is sitting on the third bench of the second row, come here. Then, only the boy sitting on the specified bench will walk up to me. What did I do here? I simply specified the boy's position with respect to the position of the bench and the row he was sitting in. Similarly, a point in any plane can be given a fixed position with respect to the coordinate axis. So without further ado, let's first look at how coordinate axes are drawn in a plane. We'll first draw two lines perpendicular to each other, where one line will be perfectly horizontal and the other line will be perfectly vertical, such that they are perpendicular to each other and they also intersect at a point. We'll call the horizontal line as the x-axis and the vertical line as the y-axis. And we'll denote the point where they are intersecting with the capital letter O. And this point is known as the origin. Now, the meaning of origin is a point from where something begins. Even in this case, the origin marks the beginning of the coordinate system, which consists of the coordinate axis that we just drew. Okay, you know what, let's make it simpler for you. Uh, just take a sheet of paper and fold it along the middle. Have you done that? Okay, now make a crease, then open the paper again. You will have a vertical line running in the middle of the paper now, right? Next, just turn it by 90 degrees and make another fold in the middle. Again, make a crease so that when you open it, you have one horizontal line and one vertical line on the paper. Wow, it feels as if I'm teaching you origami. Anyway, now the horizontal crease is your x-axis while the vertical crease is your y-axis. And the point where they meet, right in the middle, right in the center, is the origin. Also, this sheet of paper on which you made your coordinate axis is known as the coordinate plane or the Cartesian plane. Do you remember how the origin on a number line represents zero? So, when we consider a point on the number line as the origin, we mark its value as zero, right? All the values written on its right are positive, while all the values written towards its left are negative values. Similarly, when we consider O as the origin, its coordinates will be at zero comma zero, while we represent the positive and the negative values on its either side on both the axes at equal distance. Let's first consider the x-axis, okay? So, we take all the numbers on the right-hand side of O as the positive numbers and those on the left-hand side of O will be negative numbers. Next, while marking the points on the y-axis, we'll consider the number above the x as positive and the ones below the x-axis as negative. You still have your sheet of paper, do you? Right? So, take a look at it now. Do you see the creases dividing the paper into four parts? This is how the coordinate axis divide the Cartesian plane into four parts too. Okay? And these four parts are called the quadrants. The quadrant that lies between the positive sides of both the axes is numbered as the first quadrant. Then we number the second, third and fourth quadrant while moving in an anti-clockwise direction. Now, let's say an ant comes and sits on the origin of your Cartesian plane. That is the sheet of paper. Suppose it walks three units on the x-axis from O and stops there. Then it turns and walks four units in the upward direction till it reaches the point P. Tell me one thing now. If the horizontal direction is the direction of the x-axis, then the vertical direction is the direction of the y-axis, right? Okay, which means the ant traveled three units in the x-direction and four units in the y-direction. 
So we will represent the AND's position at point P as 3 comma 4. Here the number 3 is the number of units travelled in the x direction while 4 is the number of units travelled in the y direction for the AND to reach the point P. Now, so the number 3 is known as the x coordinate of the point P while the number 4 will be the y coordinate of the point P. This is why we write the coordinate of P as 3 comma 4. Now let's say another teeny weeny ant starting from the origin walked three little units towards the left on the x axis from the origin and then walked down in the y direction for four units to reach the point Q. Since the ant has walked on the left side of the origin, we will take the x coordinate of the point Q as minus 3. Also, it walked in the y direction below the x axis for 4 units and this means that the y coordinate of Q as minus 4. Therefore, the coordinate of Q are minus 3 and minus 4. That is, Q is represented as minus 3 comma minus 4. And if you look at the Cartesian plane, you will see that Q lies in the third quadrant while P lies in the first quadrant. Now, if there was another point R in the second quadrant, an ant started walking at the origin, would walk two units on the left, that is in the x direction, and then climb up six units in the y direction. This gives us the coordinates of R as minus 2, comma 6. So, what did you learn from this little activity? Uh, one thing's for sure, there are too many ants on your sheet of paper. Okay, well jokes aside, one very important thing to observe here is that when we represent a point with its coordinates written in round brackets with a comma separating them, we always write the x coordinate first and then the y coordinate. Okay, so if we have a point s in the fourth quadrant where the coordinates of s are 5 comma minus 6, then to reach s from the origin, an ant will have to walk 5 units on the x-axis and then downwards in the direction of the y-axis for 6 units. Now, you know how easy it was for me to locate the center of the forehead of that woman in the picture to win the game, right? Have you ever used this same method to locate a point elsewhere in your life? Well, how about Earth? You must have learned in geography how places on earth are located using latitudes and longitudes. In fact, whenever you are heading somewhere and you use the map in your phone to give you directions, the app in your phone, imagine the app in your phone is also using the same concept to locate that place. Then locate where you are and then guide you accordingly. Wow. Now let's do a quick recap of whatever we studied by looking at this figure with the point A having its coordinates as 2 comma 4. Here if you see the distance of the point from the y axis is equal to 2 and 2 is nothing but the x coordinate of the point A. So the x coordinate of a point tells us the distance of the point from the y axis. Similarly 4 is the distance of A from the x axis and here 4 is the y coordinate of the point A. This implies that y coordinate of a point tells us the distance of that point from the x axis. In a nutshell, the x coordinate is distance of a point from the y axis and the y coordinate is the distance of the point from x axis. Now, if you look at the origin O, O is located on the x axis and so it is at a zero distance from the x-axis. At the same time, O is also on the y-axis, which means that it is at zero distance from the y-axis as well. We know that the x-coordinate of O is equal to its distance from the y-axis, while the y-coordinate of O is equal to its distance from the x-axis. Since the distance of O from both the axis is equal to zero, we can say that the x coordinate as well as the y coordinate for the origin are equal to 0. That is O can be represented as 0, 0. 
Also, the x coordinate of a point is known as its abscissa, while the y coordinate is known as the ordinate. Yes. In the case of the origin, the abscissa and the ordinate both are equal to 0, as we just saw. Okay, so what can you see here? We have the coordinate plane or the Cartesian plane and we can see a few points on it. Okay, there is a point A, there's a point B, point C and point D. We have to now write down the coordinates of these points and also find out the quadrant they line. Let's start with the origin and try to walk towards point A. So, in order to reach point A, we will have to walk a distance of 4 units on the right of the origin, that is on the x-axis and then climb up a distance of 4 units in the direction of the y-axis. We can see that the point A is at a distance of 4 units from the x-axis as well as the y-axis and so the coordinates of the point A are 4, 4. And it's clear from the figure that the point lies in the first quadrant. Now, we'll start from the origin and move towards the point C. So, to walk and reach the point C, we'll have to walk 2 units in the left of the origin, that is in the direction of the negative y-axis. And then climb up for 2 units in the y-direction. Therefore, we have the coordinates of C as minus 2, comma 2 and we can see that it lies in the second quadrant. Can you? Good. Now, similarly, can you now look at the points B and D and determine their coordinates? In fact, you can pause the video for a bit and figure it out. So, what did you find? Well, I'll tell you the coordinates of both the points so you can verify whether your own answer is correct or not. Here the coordinates of B are 5 comma minus 2, correct? And it is clear that the point B lies in the fourth quadrant. Next, the coordinates of D, place yourself, is minus 2 comma minus 4 and D lies in the third quadrant. However, you can tell which quadrant a point lies in simply by looking at its coordinates. Let me tell you how to do that. Let's say you have a point with coordinates A, B, where A is the abscissa and B is the ordinate. So, when A and B both are positive, the point will be in the first quadrant. Next, if both A and B are negative, then we'll get the point in the third quadrant. Now, if A is negative and B is positive, the point will lie in the second quadrant, obviously. Whereas, if A is positive and B is negative, the point will be in the fourth quadrant. In a nutshell, we observe that if the X coordinate and the Y coordinate both are positive, then the point is in the first quadrant. For the second quadrant, the X coordinate is negative and the Y coordinate is positive. If the point is in the third quadrant, its both X and Y coordinates are negative. And finally, if the point is in the fourth quadrant, then its x coordinate is positive, but the y coordinate is negative. Now we can easily find the coordinates of a point if we see it in the Cartesian plane. And if we know the coordinates of the point, we can also say which quadrant it lies in. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, Download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.